More than four months after the flood, one group still has boots on the ground to help eastern Kentucky recover. And a former Kentucky governor was laid to rest today. A look at the funeral for John Y. Brown, Jr. And now in December, it's going to feel more like October as we head into the weekend. That breakdown ahead as Mountain News at 6 starts now. Dedicated to eastern and southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News at 6. The Housing Development Alliance, based in Hazard, has been boots on the ground following the devastating flooding. WYMT's Dakota Makers talked to people with the organization today about their efforts more than four months later. The Housing Development Alliance has seven homes under construction for flood survivors in Breathitt, Knott, and Perry counties. They will take about three to four months to finish. We've got a lot of them going, and so when you kind of spread it out and then um, we're actually you know, still trying to hire some additional construction workers, so if anybody out there needs a job, they can give us a call. Recently, the Alliance received a $120,000 donation from Save-A-Lot in the Airport Gardens section of Perry County and $50,000 from the Eastman Corporation. Scott McReynolds says that money goes directly to flood victims, whether it be for a new home or repairs to their current one. You don't want to sound greedy and say you still need more, but uh, we, we've gotten some very generous donations that are going to really help us help uh, a bunch of folks, but there's still a bunch of folks who need help. McReynolds says people they help are in different stages of recovery, adding he stopped by a flooded house Tuesday night where no work has even begun. The need is so big, um, you know, you celebrate when you when you help somebody uh, get back in their house or, or find a solution, um, but then you turn around and there's still a lot of folks who need help. Helping Eastern Kentucky recover in Hazard, Dakota Makeress, WYMT Mountain News. HDA tells us it needs volunteers to help construct and repair homes. A group of people from Tippecanoe, Indiana are headed to Knott County tomorrow after saying they felt led to collect donations for flood survivors in their Indiana community of about 500 people. They will be bringing three semi trucks full of items. Regina Bentley, a Knott County resident who has been helping organize the delivery, says it's amazing what these people have done. He wanted to do one semi-full, 80 foot. He called me. We got another semi we're filling. Call me. It's full. Two semis full. Call me again. Three semis full. From a little town of 500 people. Bentley says if you have needs and were affected by the flood to visit notcountyrising.org to be connected with a case manager who will then assist in getting you the supplies you need. Quiet, calm and cold after our morning showers finally pushed on out of the region. It's quiet out there now and we continue to drop those temperatures quickly. A view from downtown Hazard 37 down at Triangle Park with the Christmas lights on. It is a nice little scene there downtown. UVA wise, it's a little darker as we watch the sun set. Uh, pretty soon we'll see the stars pop out. 36 in southwest Virginia. It's 39 in Clintwood, 41 in Jonesville. A little back into the Commonwealth of Kentucky, 42 Harlan, Manchester. How about 46 still the warm spot in Jacksboro, Tennessee. We'll continue Continue to see though temperatures falling into the low 40s and upper 30s heading into the nighttime hours. Last of yesterday's front pushing off the Atlantic coast. We're in good shape as we head through tonight. Just cold mid 20s out there with westerly winds continuing to pump in cold air. Details though on when some showers could try to sneak back into the forecast in a few minutes. Steve. All right, Evan, thank you. Former Governor John Y. Brown Jr. was laid to rest today. Family and close friends and state officials attended a private ceremony bidding farewell to the statesmen and businessmen at the state capitol. WYMT's Phil Pendleton has more on what was said about Brown on the day of his final service. His favorite songs were played in a room filled with those he loved and cherished along with those that he influenced. He helped lift up Kentucky's next generation of civic and economic leaders by creating the Governor Scholars Program, a program that changed my life. And John Wise has been a wonderful mentor and friend ever since. Linda Breathitt's father served as governor, then she worked for John Y. Brown Jr.'s campaign. Despite all his success, 
She says his family meant the world to him. No, I think in his last years, five or 10 years, that's what was really important to him. Uh, were his family and, and, but he loved sharing about his uh, management style and leadership tips. Of course, John Y. Brown was very successful, but his children said today during the service that he did face adversity in his life, but he hardly ever complained, even joking about the neck brace that he had to wear after suffering a horrific car accident. You know, he had a good sense of humor and he'd make fun of himself. Jim Gray also worked for Brown in the late 1970s and says through life he had a major influence on others. What John Y. was able to do was really touch people with his sense of humor, his authenticity, his spirit, and his inspiration. During Brown's funeral, his casket was draped with a Kentucky flag, but it was later switched with an American flag because of his military service. In Frankfort, Phil Pendleton, WYMT Mountain News. Brown was laid to rest at the Lexington Cemetery. The Supreme Court of Kentucky will dedicate a portrait of retired Justice Janet Stumbo at a ceremony next Tuesday in the Supreme Court courtroom at the state capitol in Frankfort. The portrait created by Kentucky artist Tona Barkley will hang in the corridors of the second floor. Justice Stumbo's two daughters will be at the dedication to help unveil the photo. Stumbo is from Prestonsburg. A recent proclamation signed by Governor Jim Justice will end West Virginia's state of emergency related to the COVID-19 pandemic on January 1st. The state of emergency was first issued on March 16th, 2020. U.S. Census Bureau data reveals about 568,000 married same-sex couples live in the United States. Yesterday, the Respect for Marriage Act passed the Senate ensuring same-sex and interracial marriages would be recognized in every state. Kelsey Soto is speaking to those who are both excited and disappointed in the landmark Senate vote. It's, it's, not, it's not for sure, it's not a done deal yet, so it's still a little, a little nervous. Leah and Hannah met in college. The two fell in love and after attending a wedding decided they wanted one of their own. But after Roe v. Wade was overturned this summer, they weren't sure they would ever get the chance. And yeah, they always tend to go back and forth yeah. all the time. So it's like we, we take a step forward and then in somewhere else we take a step back. So yeah. it's kind of you try not to get your hopes up, but you still want to be happy for like the successes that we have made and everything. So it's a little, like Leah said, a little nerve wracking trying to emotionally handle that. <laughs> Instead, they legally got married a few months ago, but still have plans to hold their big ceremony for family and friends next fall. Yeah, it's going to be nuts. Mm -hmm. It's going to be crazy. It's fantasy themed. Yeah, of course. <laughs> so swords and daggers, the whole nine yards. Oh, yeah. So very dramatic, very mm -hmm. romantic, very over the top. But that's us. So. <laughs> the Respect for Marriage Act passed by the Senate Tuesday was a historic step to protect marriage equality. The bill does not legalize same-sex marriage nationwide, but does require the federal government and states to recognize legal same-sex and interracial marriages performed in other states. It also includes religious liberty protections, but Republicans were split. But if it becomes the law of the land, uh, there's going to be a chilling effect. The Family Foundation of Kentucky tells me they were disappointed with the decision, but it won't stop them from continuing their mission. The good uh, part is these foundational values and principles are true irrespective of what a, a vote of a judge or of really a vote of the United States Congress and we'll continue to be strong advocates of policies that are to the benefit and blessing of Kentucky families. Neither of Kentucky's two Republican senators voted in favor of the measure. In Lexington, Kelsey Soto, WKYT. The House has already passed a similar measure but will take up the Senate version as soon as next week. There's been a real push by Democrats to get this done now in the lame duck session before Republicans take the House majority next year, which could make it tougher to pass. A woman has been indicted by a grand jury following a crash on I-64 that resulted in the death of an eight-year-old. State police responded to the single vehicle crash on January 24, 2021 in Carter County. The driver, 37-year-old Crystal Hodge, has been charged with assault, wanton endangerment, and murder. Troopers say an eight-year-old was ejected from a vehicle when Hodge lost control of an SUV and hid an embankment, causing the vehicle to roll several times. 
An 11 year old also suffered serious injuries in the crash. Crews from several departments were called to a fire Tuesday afternoon in Rockcastle County. In a post on the Mount Vernon Fire Department Facebook page, officials said the department was called in to help the Brindle Ridge Fire Department with a fire in the northern end of the county. When crews arrived, they found the fire had spread to a nearby car. Firefighters said in the post with the manpower of both departments along with the Broadhead Fire Department, they were able to get that fire knocked down in just more than 10 minutes. Well, coming up, uh, some showers and warm air. In fact, more of both on the way as we head into the weekend. The latest coming up after this. Plus three Louisville organizations are partnering to provide new computers to the Knott County Area Technology Center. And one group of students are hoping to ship a little piece of home to soldiers overseas. WYMT News app offers alerts on breaking stories as they happen, customized to the categories you choose. The WYMT